I'm back. I know y'all kind of wondering, like, man, this nigga been posted. Like, I've been having y'all wait. I've been having y'all wait. Damn, my shirt wrinkled, folks. I apologize for the wrinkled shirt, y'all. I just grabbed this bitch right out my motherfucker, uh white tea hamper, folks, and put it on. So I don't need motherfuckers coming. Ooh, man. Damn, folks. Um, I'm trying, man, did I just curse? No, I don't think I just blurted it out or something. But, um, yeah, I don't need people trying to, um, <laughs> talk about my shirt, man. You feel me? I don't need nobody talking about my shirt. You feel me? So, you feel me? So, um, uh, today... Black, unique, Mike. Yeah, hit my DM on Instagram. Hit my DM on Instagram, bro, if you serious. You know what I'm saying? We go from there. But today I wanted to talk about my sister, bro. You feel me? It's her birthday. Um, Mina Red. Hey, look. Yeah, bro, look. I My shirt is wrinkled. It's clean. It, it's clean, but it's wrinkled, man. You feel me? I told y'all when I come do my stories, I ain't going to be wearing no... How I be dressing on the net. I'm not gonna be wearing no uh Miri shirts and trying to do over fancy stuff unless I'm not at the crib where I gotta wear something that I actually, you know, um that um that I actually have to wear because I don't I'm not around the rest of my clothes. But you feel me right now? Uh you know, I'm just, my shirt is very clean. It's actually came right out the clean hamper. It's just wrinkled. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all bear with me, man. Hopefully, y'all cool with a little wrinkle, man. You know? Um, Yeah, but today I wanted to talk about me. It's her birthday. I wanted to give her her flowers, give y'all a little bit of backstory on um, CJ. My man. Shout out to CJ, man. I'm falling for some wood, man. Yeah. He say, he say for some woods. I be there the big sis. I appreciate that, bro. Ooh. Damn. Damn, did I just zoom in a little bit? Damn, we could do that on there, too? Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, folks. Today, I wanted to speak about Mina. Do some joint story that might not include you, but you would speak on D-Things. So. I actually got good joint stories on photo, and I'm going to actually do that with next. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some joint <laughs> I'm gonna do jail stories because I'm gonna tell some stories from the county and in prison I'm fun them so yeah that's actually a great idea um that's actually a great idea lf257 <laughs> do that next for sure but today I just wanted to you know get y'all because I know a lot of people y'all see her y'all heard about her you know, and today I just wanted to give her flowers. You know, it's a lot of people that got negative, you know, type of insight or some type of judgment about her. And I'm just here to clarify that and, you know, give her her flowers on her, on her birthday, man. So let's get right into it, man. Um, We need the official story of the come of Tay 600. That, that sound like a movie. That sound like a movie, like the, the making of Tay 600. <laughs> How Chicago scene be coming on for the making of the story of Pharaoh? No, no limit him. <laughs> hey, I need, I need, a, I need, a, uh, I need, I, I need. That's gonna be a movie. Oh, for now, oh, for now, I ain't gonna be. Um, definitely got to do one of them though. You feel me? One of these days too. Um. But yeah, um, uh, shout out to uh, shout out to the real NT up and Youngin for the donations, man, and Jaden. <clears throat> BKN, wow! I remember, folks. He stayed throwing it up, man. He stayed throwing it up. What's up, my boy, man? I'm fun. Um, I see y'all rocking with me today. I ain't gonna lie to you, but um. Yeah, man. Um, you know me and Mina. 
You know, I was born before she could walk. Do it live on the Blue Fan BDs, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I can't talk about them because I don't know about them. They don't exist in my life. I've never had, never existed. I never thought it was real. I just heard about it. I don't know no Blue Fan BDs. It's actually an abomination to the nation. So if you catch a Blue Fan BD and you riding under the six, stump their head in when you catch them because they really fin balls and all that. If they is talking about they blue fan, that mean they siding with, with the fire. But also that's 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 illegal. Like ain't that's not illegal. People be trying to make up their own stuff out here, and that's not <coughs> that's not an accurate thing. Whoever made that up never got no love or appreciation or any type of recognition from the other games. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, we grew up together. You know, I was born. I was actually born before like. She really, like, even turned one. I was born by the time she started walking, if she was walking. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, we basically grew up together. We basically grew up together. I ain't going to lie, bro. My, my ring around this shirt, I ain't, I ain't liking this shirt, bro. I'm finna, I'm, finna try to, I'm, finna, I'm finna try to find another shirt, bro. I ain't going to need to lie to y'all, man. This, this this shirt. This shirt, I love it. Man, You know what? I might just, I might just take this motherfucker off, man. I ain't gonna mean, fuck it, fuck it. Bro. I'm taking the shirt off, y'all. I'm taking the shirt off, man. Fuck it. Yeah. So you know, back to back to uh regular schedule programming. Uh, yeah. You know, I was born before she could walk. I was born before she could walk. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I don't got no weed. I don't got no smoke, right? That's why it took me so long to go live. I don't got no smoke. So, really what I had to do, I'm just going to I'm just gonna flame this black up. I'm going to flame this black up. And, and I'm going I'm to I'm pull me up. I'm going to pull me up. I'm on my club. I'm on my club. I'm on my club. Shay Shay, today. I'm on my club. Shay Shay, man. I'm on my club. Shay Shay, man. I'm on my cl club. Shay Shay, man. <clears throat> Call me Unk today, man. I'm Unk. I'm Unk, man. Well, Y'all talk to me now. Vaughn say, grandson, I'm unk. Unky. Unk, unk. Unk. Unk Tay Tay. Instead of being unk Shay Shay, unk Tay Tay. If anybody watch Undisputed, man, in the mornings, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm on my club Shay Shay, man. Yeah. 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 But, uh... Yeah, man. I was born before she was, she was able to walk. So with that being said, it was like we grew up together. She wasn't just like a big sister to me. She was actually like <clears throat> somebody who I really like grew up side by side with. You know what I'm saying? See, look, for the new people that's coming in, man, I just said it. I ran out of thoint and I spent the whole time making y'all wait on live. So I can try and get some more thoint, but it just was, it just was not happening, you know. So now I'm doing club Shay Shay. I done pull me a shot before one o'clock, and yeah, yeah, got to flame, got to flame the black up today, man. You know, got to flame. Got to flame the black. Yeah, but yeah. So, back to the story, man, because a lot of people throw me off. Y'all funny, man. Y'all making jokes, man. Yeah, so now, because we grew up together, it was like we always were side by side. We was always like twins. When you grow up less than a year apart, you basically mature, go through puberty, go through a lot of situations, emotions, feelings, and things together. You know what I'm saying? So, now, <laughs> <laughs> make sure y'all like and hit that um. 
Share and hit that like button, folks. So, um, yeah. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, that I was meant to be here. You know, like I'm the chosen child. I'm a miracle child. You know, my mama, after she was pregnant with Mina and she had her, my mama got on birth control. And my father managed to still impregnate her to the fact that she thought she was so good that she didn't know she was pregnant until she couldn't get an abortion. Yeah, my mama went to the hospital one day and she was six months pregnant. Yes. My mama went to the hospital one day and she was six months pregnant with me. I swear to God, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know, but she went to the, she went to, she went one day, she went one day to the hospital, to the emergency room, and they said, hey, you're six months pregnant. <laughs> Two, and, and just, 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 just pregnant enough not to never get an abortion. You know what I'm saying? Just, just pregnant enough not to get an abortion. She couldn't at that time. So, then I came. The miracle child. And even when I was born, I was born premature, born with, you know, defects. And, you know, I spent a lot of my first months in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? I lived in the hospital when I first was born. So I fought very hard to be where I am in front of this screen. I fought very hard to be sitting here talking to you guys right now. My upbringing was hard. You know what I'm saying? I fought hard to be right here and to be in the mind state that I was. I had to take a needle in my spine when I was first born, when I was little, about this thick. And and it, when they put it in me, they told my mother, they told her to hold me. And they said, if I move even a little bit, I could be paralyzed <clears throat> while they was taking the shot because I had to take it in my spine. <laughs> so I fought hard to be. But when I got well, it was just me and my sister, man. Like, she's one of the first memories I have. And, and you know, like, she one of the just first people that I remember seeing in my life. You know, like, the first memories I have, she in them. You know what I'm saying? Her and my mama. And that's just, she's all I know. You know what I'm saying? She always been all that I ever knew. You know what I'm saying? My sister, she always been, like, my pride and joy. You know, like, people, like... Like, you know, she was always one of the ones that was just, like, always in my corner. <clears throat> yeah, they say God I always get the last say. Yeah, he got it. He, 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 he made sure that I made it. For sure he did. Um, but, yeah, you know, like, growing up, after I came home and from the hospital and we got old, you know, me and Mina, we used to always, she was bigger than me. You know, like, she was bigger than me. She had went and, like, grew a growth spurt. They thought she was going to be, like, six feet tall, six, I mean, six five, model. Like, they, my, my, my grandma used to fantasize over my sister, bro, because she was so big at such a young age and, and, that people just thought that she was just going to grow into some type of model and do fashion and all that type of stuff. But God had other plans. So, you know, one of the first little stories that I remember... <clears throat> The thing that I remember doing with Mina is a lot of people don't know this, but I taught her how to ride a bike. Like, ooh. Damn. Damn, I'm, I'm messing up. But yeah, I taught her how to ride a bike. Mina was a little slow motherfucker, man. She ain't know how to ride no motherfucker bike. I was, I was, especially the one, and I'm talking about the ones without the training wheels, for I ain't talking about. All the ones with the training. I'm talking about when we got old enough to ride bikes. She ain't know how to ride no motherfucking bike. Her little ass was retarded, folk. Oh, bro, she ain't know how to ride no bike. So when I was a, when I had a bike, because we used to have to share that same bike back in the day. It was like a pink bike. I don't know what. Like, it was a pink. Probably was her bike. I ain't going to lie. Probably was her bike now that I'm thinking about it. But I was riding that motherfucker because I knew how to ride it. And she, she did it. She didn't know how to ride it, folk. She ain't know how to ride it. So, now... Nah, on Fulham Gray, um, um, like, I remember one day, she was watching me ride down the street, she like, brother, how you do that, she scary, scary as hell and shit, so, <laughs> they took my pretty and pink bike, 
Man, y'all crazy, man. Y'all slow as hell. So now look, I end up telling her like, bro, just put, start getting on the bike by the gate. Hold the gate to get your balance and then push yourself off the gate and just paddle. Don't think about falling over or nothing. Just paddle. Just paddle. You feel me? So after a while, she ended up learning how to ride a bike and all that. And I always tweak with her about that. Like, yeah, I done taught you a lot of stuff. You feel me? I done taught you how to ride a bike. You used to be falling on your shit. <laughs> okay, so I remember, you know, when I was speaking on one of the reasons, like we always been, we always been around each other and one of the first memory I remember me with me and her, we was in second and third grade. We was going to Parkside over east on 71st and um Is that Stony? I think that's Stony. So we was going We was going on 71st, going to school at, on Parkside over there. And we I was in second grade and she was in third grade one day. And back then, like I told you, she used to be big as hell. Like, back in the day, before we got a little older, like, Mina was the devil seed, not me. Mina was, like, the badass, even when we was shorties, bro. Like, I was a good kid. I ain't gonna lie. I wasn't fucked up. She was. I ain't gonna lie. She, 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 she was fucked up. She was slow as hell. I ain't gonna even bet. I got new people coming in alive. Well, I, I'm gonna tell it again. I didn't have no thought. I couldn't find none expeditiously. So what I'm doing now is I'm flaming up this black and I got me a little yak. <laughs> I got me a little, I got me a little, little what's the name? I'm on my club Shay Shay. I'm on my club Shay Shay, man. So look. She was slow though. And Back then, I ain't had to. I ain't had to do a whole lot of woofing or talking or doing none of that. Cause I had big bro. Niggas was scared of her. She wasn't just bigger than me. She was bigger than all the niggas my age. Like she was bigger than the people her age. We the same age basically. She, she bigger than she bigger than me. She bigger than the niggas I'm. I'm in a class with for all type of shit. So now, bang. One day, and we always laugh about this too. When we when we talking or whatever, right? One day, we in class. Like I said, we in the same class because it's a second and third grade split. I don't know if anybody on this live ever been in a split grade class, but they used to have them a lot when I was a shorty. I don't really hear them hear about them too much lately. But when I was growing up, it was kind of a popular thing. Like when people will have split classes. Sometimes you know you'll have a teacher. I think her name was Miss Zimba. You know what I'm saying? And she'll just. She was in class one day, and she had got into it. I heard her, like, I'm at my desk. She arguing with some boy, though. You feel me? Like, the boy fake bigger, though, but she still bigger than him. You know what I'm saying? She taller than him. So now, I hear them. They going back and forth or whatever, folk. Before I even really get a chance to really, like, overly, like, involve myself in this, because even though I was a nice kid, like, I already knew, like, nigga, you feel me? Like, it's about my family or my sisters, my siblings. Like, we got to go all the way. But at the same token, I ain't even get up out of my chair. I didn't even get a chance to, bro. She beat that man under the desk in third. And he and he was in her grade. He, I was in second grade. She was in third grade. We just had a split class. So, the teacher was teaching them third grade shit and teaching us second grade shit. Bro, she beat the shit out of that boy. He was screaming and shit like, oh, damn, I'm still at my desk. Like, damn, she just beat folks ass. <laughs> I'm folk gray. Like, I'm, I couldn't believe my sister. But that was like my first instant and witness of like her just like how, how much of a savage she was. For like, she been hard body since we were shorties. Like, for sure, for sure. Like, but that was our first situation where I seen her put her hands on somebody that wasn't me. Because she used to beat my ass when we was kids, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, she used to beat my ass so bad, bro. I, 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 growing up, sometimes it just was like she was Debo. She was like Debo as far as the siblings, because she ain't never had to fuck up my little sister because Maya was just a little too young. But me, I got all that shit. I got it all, bro. I ain't even gonna lie.
Like she 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 was a bad kid, bro. And like this was in third grade. She was fucked up and that shit continued to at another school when we got to like fifth grade. We ended up transferring out of it, I think, after that year. Or the year the the next year after that. So when we transferred, we was going to another school now called Tanner. <laughs> And, and, and cut those them shit, the, uh, KTS. We was going to Tana in a school in they hood, and I think she was in like fifth grade. <clears throat> and one day we had went to school right, and I went the whole day without seeing my sister G. And we had got picked up by our mama and daddy one day right, and like I don't know why I didn't ask her this when we first like seen each other at the school and was waiting to get picked up. But I asked in the car, it was me, her, and my little sister in the back seat, and my mom and daddy, they was in the front seat. My daddy was driving. So we talking, everybody in the car talking. I'm sitting in the middle, me on my left, Maya on my right. And I end up saying something to me. I end up, I um somebody had called me. But I end up like, um, can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me? Can everybody hear me? Please tell me y'all can hear me before I um keep talking. Because I remember last time somebody called me. I ain't even, um, you know, uh, yeah. So now, I'm in the car with Mina. I'm like, it's me in the middle, her on my left, my on my right. So I'm talking to Mina. I'm like, um, hey, bro, where you been at, man? I ain't seen you out. Because she like, bro, if you're going to do something like this, the least you could do is put me on. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I fucked it up because I said I blew, I blew her cover, but I didn't know I was blowing it. Like I'm, we in four, I'm in fourth grade, bro. Who the fuck knows about ditching school? Like I don't. What the fuck is we, man? What? Bro, we what? What is what? What is we? Like, come on, bro. Like, come on. Ain't nobody ditching school in fourth and fifth grade, bro. Like I ain't know nothing about that, bro. So this lady ditches school, G. This lady ditched school, G. <clears throat> and don't tell me. So now when I when we in the car, I'm like, hey, bro. I'm like, hey. I ain't seen yo. I ain't seen you all day in school. Where you been at, man? She like, yeah. She say I was in the dean's office. She said something like I was in the dean's office or something, something like that. And I'm like, yeah. Well, the dean walked up to me. He said he ain't see you and you weren't in his office and such and such and like I'm really like I'm really I'm <laughs> I'm really blowing her cover in front of mama, my mama and daddy. G like bogus as hell. I ain't even gonna lie, but I don't know I'm doing it. You feel me? So my daddy in the front listening, he like, what? Like, he catch on him and my OG. They catch on and shit. So, man, they must have called up to the school. <laughs> For when they call up to the school, the dean and the principal and shit get to tell them, like, they ain't, basically ain't seen me now. as none today. They thought she was sick or something. Ain't coming to school. She just seen her little brother and sister. Folk, <clears throat> this lady, Mina, my daddy and them get off the phone with the people at the school. They get to question her and shit. She still lying, saying other shit, all type of shit. Bro, we get to our crib. You know, we stayed in the white building and shit in the hood. We get to the crib, folk, and my daddy take his belt off. He take his thick-ass black leather belt off and got to beating the shit out of her, folk. I ain't go <laughs> he got to whooping me in the ass, folk, and I'm watching him. Now, you know, like everybody know. When a sibling getting whooped, folk, you got to be on your best behavior, folk, for you get it next. You feel me? Because when a motherfucker whooping ass, they'll just get to whooping everybody ass. Like, you know what, motherfucker? You know, like, just everybody got to get a whooping now. You know what I'm saying? So now, we, me and Maya watching her, and we like, ooh, 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 ooh. Like, whole time, bro, this lady ain't dropped not one till she, ooh, ah, pop, dad, ooh, ah. Like, she not even... Man, this lady ain't even crying, folk. And this is my daddy whooping her ass, bro. This ain't even, this ain't my mama. This, this, this ain't that, this ain't that, bro. This is my pops. He going, he, mother, you bad little mutt. What the fuck you think you fast? And, bro, he, he going crazy, folk. And my daddy was going through some shit around that time, too, folk. He was beating the shit out of her, folk. But she, she ain't crying. And I remember looking at that shit, feeling a little bogus. Like, damn, I just got my sister whooped. I ain't try to. But damn, you ain't dropped no tears. Like, you know, usually when you getting your ass beat and you getting the whooping, bro, you try to drop tears so, like, they can stop. You don't be dropping. You don't, you don't drop. You don't not cry. Like, why would I not cry while I'm getting my ass beat, bro? 
My daddy get to beat my ass. I'm crying. The first hit, oh, I'm crying, crying. Like, I'm crying to the point where I don't even want to. Man, bro, please stop whooping you, me. I'm trying to make them over. I think they killing me, bro. I ain't going to bet. I'm trying to make you think you about to beat the shit out of me, gang. I ain't going to bet. I'm trying to make you think like, hey, man. Yo. Like, I ain't going to lie. I'm trying to make my pops think he killing me. Please don't hit me no more, bro. You feel me? Like, I ain't going to need cap to you. I'm just trying to. I'm being a honey, Pop. I'm finna die. You about to kill me if you hit me one more time. You feel me? <laughs> so that's the type of person I was. But this lady, she didn't even cry, bro. I didn't understand why she, was, why she wasn't crying to stop my daddy from beating her ass. But she never stopped crying. So now I'm like, all right, okay. This lady is nuts. She nuts. We ain't never not cry when we got our ass beat. She, she lost her damn mind. So now... I'm trying to cry a little bit, too, because I don't want to beat my ass, bro. I went to school, Pop. Don't come make your way over here next. I ain't did nothing, bro. You feel me? Like, please just don't even do that to me, folks. So now, uh, um, she was ruthless. I mean, my sister, she was ruthless, gang. I'm not even going to cap. I'm not going to take that from her or nothing. So... Now, you know, growing up, like I told y'all before, Mina was always taller than me. She was always bigger than me. She was always like, um, she was always like, 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 bro, like, it wasn't even like a look gap, like, bro, like, I was like, like this tall, and she was like this big, bro, I ain't even gonna bap, like, she was just a tall bitch. I mean, damn. She was a tall girl. She, she was a tall motherfucker, fool. I ain't gonna lie. Mina was a big bitch back in the day, fool. You would have to slap her ass with your pipe back in the day, fool. She was just tall as hell. I don't know why. You feel me? Growing up, I think literally, bro, she didn't grow up. I don't think she grew an inch after she was like 11. I ain't gonna even lie. I don't think Mina grew none since we've been like 11 years old. You feel me? Like, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think she's grew an inch. She probably got a little shorter. I ain't gonna lie, cause back in the day, I remember looking up a whole lot. Like, can't wait till I get older. For I can't wait. I'm gonna be bigger than you one day. Gee, so um, like I said, she always used to whoop my ass a little bit. Like, not even like on some just um abusive shit, but it's just like me being her brother and me knowing like we the same age. You know, even though I know she's the oldest. Like, me as a boy, bro, I'm going to challenge my sister, especially when we getting a little older, for Like, I'm going to challenge you. are not just going to run me and make me do the chores that you don't want to do. And you ain't about to just, uh, just, just, just walk all over me. You feel me? Like, so I'm just like, you know, I refute. We get into our little battles, G. So one day, G, because we used to share rooms back then. So one day... One day, I think we were sharing a room at this time. Maybe we wasn't. I think we was, though. So one day, we in the room, G. And it's, it's later on that night. We sitting there arguing and shit. So we get up in each other's face. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You ain't finna keep doing this and that. I'm woofing that and shit. For why this lady go right in my shit, in my eye. Fuck. One hit. I'm, oh, oh, oh. I'm hysterically crying, like. Hysterically crying, bro. I ain't gonna even lie. Like I'm, 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 I'm crying to the point where I'm, I'm low key trying to make my mom and daddy hear, hear me crying so they can come in here and beat her ass. Cause I can't beat her ass yet. I want, th I want my daddy and mama to come in like, what the fuck you done did to Ted? And beat and beat her ass, folks. Cause I can't beat her ass, folks. I'm, bro, I'm low key trying to call for help while I'm crying loud. I don't remember nobody coming to beat her ass though. I ain't gonna bat. I ain't, I ain't even. I ain't even gonna cap. I don't think nobody beat her ass. I don't think she even got a whooping for that. And my shit was black. <laughs> my shit was black, folks. I ain't even gonna bat. Like my eye was black. Like it wasn't black. Like like a shield black. But bro, my eye was black. I ain't even gonna bat. It was. It was. It was black. I'm falling them in. That shit hurt it. And I was crying like a bitch for a long time. So now. After she blacks my eye, I swear to God, that's one of the last times I remember her being bigger than me. I'm not even joking. Like, I think she punched me so hard, I grew like five inches, fool. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, I really grew up after she punched me in my eye. Like, when she punched me in my eye, bro, I became her big brother. I ain't even gonna lie. I went from being, she punched me so hard, I came two years older than her. 
I swear to God, because that's the last time I remember her fucking me up like that. I ain't going to lie. And I told her, I'm going to whoop your ass one day when we get older, bro. I ain't going to lie. She was beating me 16. You hear me, folks? She, man, folks, she, so she gave me a shiner, folks, in like third grade or something. I'm, damn, what? Fourth, fifth grade or something. Damn. What's she on? Um, you feel me? Something. Like, bro, she creased me. Bang. She give me a shiner right in my seat, but I get bigger. I ain't gonna lie, I got bigger. <laughs> I got bigger after that. Boy, I swear to God, she wasn't bigger than me no more. I was, boy, I swear to God, after I got it to a certain height, I ain't even had to. She always been tough as nails, so you always gonna bump, but it's like, she understood I'll fuck her up. I ain't gonna lie, because I went her shit when I got bigger. It was like, it's low key, like, I remember every time she used to try to play with me with Shorty, so when we got old, I'm just like, all right, your ass better find you something to do for <laughs> Beat that ass. <laughs> for them. For beat that ass, boy. And it's like, bro, with Mina G, we could fight like cats and dogs because she's a boy for real. Mina not a girl. Mina is not a girl, bro. Mina is a man. That's why we call each other twins, bro. Like, she a man, bro. I ain't going to lie. She, uh, she, 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 um... <laughs> She's a guy. So now, uh, um, now, like a little bit after, uh, like our fifth and sixth grade year, she started really getting into this street shit heavy. You know what I'm saying? And, like, this is why I talk about with her jumping off the porch and all that type of stuff before me. Because, um, she, she was, um, she was, um, she was um going on the low end with our cousins, bro. Mind you, Mina like 11 years old. Mina like 11 years old, bro. But she as tall as an 18-year-old. So she going down on the low end with my ratchet-ass cousins, fighting, beating up other look. You know, back in the day, everybody had their little sets, even the hoes. Like, even hoes was basically in a clique or a group. It wasn't just the niggas in the gang or a group. It was bitches. It was like... 600, we was clicked up. It was like you was clicked up with a female block. You had to have, like, females represent your hood, too. Like, it wasn't just niggas. So, like, even with 600, that's why Pretty and Pink was like, they was like the female us. Like, we had our own women and bitches that we claimed and that was, like, stood on business for our hood. You know what I'm saying? So, Mina was one of them down there on the low end before she was a so icy, so icy. You This, this before so icy became basically Welch for her. She was a so icy girl. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she was, she was, she was Welsh rare before Welsh died. Welsh was her real homie, her real big brother. For I know him through her and my cousins. Like you feel me? So she, she out there at 11 years old, lacing holes like 11. She out there big as hell, beating shit. I ain't gonna lie. Like really a member for hoes, really ducking that shit for my sister. She 11, 12 years old, beating up hoes that's already out of high school. I ain't gonna lie, because she was hanging with my big cousin, and they had her, like, by six, seven years. You know what I'm saying? So, she riding with them, fighting all these grown hoes and shit like that. So, it was like, when she went to school, any little bitch that gave her problems, it was already ass whoopers for them. It was belt to ass. I ain't gonna lie. She fighting hoes twice, them the two times her age, boy. Any little bitch she catch at school, she molly whopping her ass on phone now. If your sister ever want to get married, tell her how that means she pretty. Good stories, bro. You number one in Chicago story. The the theo theological handyman. Shout out to you, gang. Shout out to you, my boy. Uh, I definitely, I don't think she want to get married no time soon, but I definitely uh be sure to tell her and shit. So, <clears throat> one day, now, she, uh... She was always doing that down low. This is before I even jumped out the porch. I'm not even going to lie, y'all. So, like, she was already off the porch. And when I came off the porch, like, I had to basically learn the ropes from my sister. I ain't even going to lie. Like, so now we fast forward. Now I'm in, like, sixth or seventh grade. And I'd be toward the end, toward the end of, like, sixth grade, it got real, real. Like, and I don't want to say, like, I jumped off the porch in 6th or 7th grade. Like, I was just learning all this shit. Then, really, I was in the streets for real, but I guess you couldn't call it the streets yet. We didn't have 600. We wasn't claiming no games. We was just outside 
getting into fights, getting into shit with other niggas from other schools. Like we was, we was doing a lot. You know what I'm saying? And we was like, we, but it wasn't no gang that we was doing it under. Like it was like basically low key. It was like some schools versus schools type shit. Like you feel me? It used to be Bessie Ross versus um, Carter. It used to be Dallas versus Sexton. You know, like just like shit like that. You feel me? It wasn't even it, even with high schools they was doing that. Like niggas that diet really ain't fuck with. Niggas at the P or like shit like that. You feel me? So it was just like a lot of school beefs. Like, I don't know why, but if you went to a certain school, certain schools ain't like people from certain other schools. And it's like, if you went to that school, you just feel right in line with whatever that school meant to or hated about another school. Like when I went, started going to the Ross, I immediately didn't like niggas from Carter. I ain't even gonna lie. That's just like how, how it happened on bro. You just gotta, that's just how it happened on phone. So it's like, we didn't have gangs and all that before that, but we was still kind of doing gang shit. You feel me? We was doing gang shit, kind of, but we didn't have a gang to claim or do it under that name or that umbrella. But we was doing gang shit already. You feel me? So, but around sixth, seventh grade, this one gang come in effect. You feel me? This one six hundred. This one the front getting made, even though the debt was already out there. This was the front, front getting made, so the young niggas could do what they do, and uh. Shit like that, you feel me? So it's like, um, now we get, we get, we getting in, um, we getting in, uh, the town where I'm jumping off the porch. And it's like, my sister folks, she kind of like devoted herself from being like on the low end so much around her, our cousins helping them to just really like, <clears throat> To just really like being with me and watching me. You know what I'm saying? And Mina was all like I said, we always been from our hood. We always been living in there and moving how we was moving. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like she was unfamiliar with the people I was hanging with or growing up around. She just like they had, she didn't hang with them. She saw them at school, saw them when we went to the centers, kicked it with everybody then. But when she wanted to hang, she went down to the low end. You know what I'm saying? But now, since I'm jumping out here and I'm in this shit heavy, it's like my sister kind of like followed me. You know what I'm saying? She kind of like followed me. She stopped going down low and she started being with me. She started being at the crib, doing what well, she was always at the crib, doing her. That's how she had a little money. She always had like a little, a little, um, little bread coming in because she always did her. Mina was one of the first little bitches doing her, little women doing her out here, folks. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, but up until I came into like sixth, seventh grade, she was the most fucked up child that my mama had. I ain't even gonna lie. But I I I was thankful for the things that she had been through because I had needed that. Like I was going through my phases and I had needed somebody to show me the ropes because I had niggas who was just getting in this shit too. Like I how the fuck I'm gonna learn from Booga and me and Booga jumped in this shit at the same time. Like how I'm gonna learn from other niggas that just jumped off the porch with me. You know what I'm saying? So I had to have somebody that was really like a professional trench baby, basically. Watching my back, giving me advice, just doing little shit. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't just me. She did that for a lot of us. D-Rose, L.A. She kept niggas like... <clears throat> niggas could come talk to me, bro. Like, I remember one day before D-Rose, the day before he got locked up, the night he got locked up, nigga, he was at my, my crib crying, smoking a squirt. Like, not crying, boo-hoo, boo, but, like, real life dropping tears. When they was looking for him for that attempt, he telling me, like, man, he don't want to go down. He ain't trying to go to jail, folks. Like, he just had got out for a tech. He telling this shit to my sister, though. Everybody else get hard body treatment or just regular shit. He and up conf confessing and confiding in my sister smoking the square. Like, damn, big sis, I just want to holler at you real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we all knew that Mina was, like, a different breed when it came to like what we was had going on in the street she was just different from people bro all the savages all the gangsters all the real niggas folk they knew me and respected her with to the highest degree you know what i'm saying like it's just it's just no way around that you know what i'm saying and <clears throat> everything changed when 600 got made when i jumped into the 600 thing it was like i was a uh, she just really, she just really just didn't never leave my side. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, she went from having her own thing, her own beefs, and her own trials and tribulations going on down low. And she just devoted everything to being around me and watching me and having my back. And I always appreciate her for that.
You feel me? I always appreciate what she did and how she moved because of that. Um, uh, like, when she really got involved in my hood, hun, I remember I was hanging with Lubu. You know, Lubu the one that really put me in it, put me in the game. And, you know what's so crazy? This is like the same story with Von, for these niggas, for I'm talking about these my homies, for as soon as they lay eyes on my fucking sister, here they go, thirsty. So now, this little boo, folk, I'm in it. You know, little boo, little boo older than me. So, like, I'm in it. I'm learning from big bro. You feel me? I'm basically, he basically, like, nurturing me, like, taking the time out to really know. Like, because he asked me. He put me in it. So, he took the time out to teach and make sure I learned. I, and I and it's crazy because that's niggas don't even do that no more. Niggas will put you in it or... Have you out here, for and won't even teach you nothing, fo. Like, he taught me things, fo. Taught me how to move and maneuver through the streets, fo. Kept me alive. So, when Lil Boo seen me in the it was a rap. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna lie. And before you goofies and niggas that's disrespectful start, oh, yeah, she was fucking with Vine and Lil Boo. What other? Bro, this shit with Lil Boo was before she ever knew Vine existed. This was years before Vaughn came into the play, fo. Vaughn and Lil Boo weren't even homies. They didn't even know each other, fo. Our hoods weren't even fucking with each other. We was fucking with KD, SKD. We was fucking with them. And Oak Block and Front Street, we was getting shootouts with them over this shit. You feel me? Like, because we supposed to have been the guys, and we was technically fuck, fucking with the ops. You know what I'm saying? But, so, like, before a lot of goofies and disrespectful people come, it wasn't even like that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even nothing, nothing in that nature. You know what I'm saying? But when Lil Boo saw her, it was a wrap. Now, Lubu, like, but it's like, the thing is, when he, when he, when it was a rap, it was like, this always brought me and the people that sh liked her closer, bro. Like, nobody never tried to take advantage of my sister or just crack her and treat her like she was a throwaway. Every nigga, folk, from, from any block, folk, like, they ain't, they gonna, they gonna honor her, folk. Like, they gonna treat her like, it's basically like, you, I'm already they brother. But, like, the, the love that they got for my sister, folk. That shit just made everything more better, fool. Like, you feel me? It wasn't no, it didn't make it weird because the niggas had so too much respect for her. It actually made niggas all of us become one big happy family even quicker. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um <clears throat> Hold on. Um yeah, uh, she was always, like, respected like that, and, like, she got so many hood, like, like, legend, legendary niggas folk that really, like, wish they could have had her for and wanted her when we was shorties folk that she, that just couldn't obtain or they wanted her for, she was like a prize in the hood for, like, niggas wasn't walking around looking like my sister for, like, 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 Niggas be sounding. My being with me right now. You on my dick, dummy. You just want to. You want to troll, gang. You want to troll. She with me right now. I ain't acting soft, boy. What's wrong with you? Is you slow? Is you cool? I don't gotta act soft. I see her every day. I love her. <laughs> Is you mad about that? Is you mad about that? You cool? But, uh, yeah, she was, um, this lady was, um, she had a lot of respect, fo. She had a lot of respect, fo, in the hood by a lot of people, fo. Like, yeah, I seen the Crooklyn 58, but, like, what do that matter? I don't, it don't matter to me. It don't matter to me. I don't, I don't even care about what niggas be having going on. A lot of stuff don't be having nothing to do with me, but shout out Crooklyn. <clears throat> Uh, what I was finna say? Fuck, I'm a lie for. I don't gotta lie about that, boy. Um, shit. You know, I be telling y'all, I be having to jot stuff down, for Like, like I be having to jot stuff down, fo. I be having to jot stuff down, fo. So, Tay, we have, we, we need an E-Dog story. That's one individual I can say seems solid, don't do too much. I definitely got an E-Dog story for y'all, too, man. We gonna lock that in, too, fo. I ain't gonna bet. So now y'all know it got to the situation where 
I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know, Mina in the hood. You feel me? After a while, after she became messing with Lil Boo and started doing her thing, she became like one of the female ladies who stood on business. I ain't gonna lie. Like, she stood on business. Mina was punching holes up. Mina was, like, you could sick Mina on the bit. Like, what? Who the fuck bet you over here? You, you over here tweaking? You over here tweaking? Woo. I remember one day, some some little eater bitch that was on the block named Jazz for she woofing. I said, you know what? Me and Boogan them get to tweaking. We, you know what? We finna call so she over there woofing thing. We don't get no fuck. You can call whatever you want and da da da. Mind you, she knew Mina though, cause we all went to the Ross together. We was all in school. Bro, I swear to God, bro, Mina pull come up right there and shit. So she talking, man. Mina go right in her shit. Pop. Hit this big bitch one time. I'm talking about this bitch was so damn thick and big. For I thought she was gonna grab Mina and slam on us shit. For I thought we was gonna have to jump the bitch, bro. Mina punched this lady shit and went in the hallway, left the hood, all type of shit, bro. And I'm just like, damn. Those really be thugging they shit. You feel me? Then one day, folk, we on the block. Now, imagine Mina come to the hood. She see op bitches on the block. But. <clears throat> The op bitches on the block for us, include me. I ain't even, I'm not going to hold you, folk. We had op hoes from Jaro in our hood. They was coming to see some of the guys, and one of them was for me. I ain't even going to cap. I'm going to be 100 with y'all. Y'all my fans, supporters, and followers, and subscribers. Folks. We going to keep it 100. They, she, they, you know, it, it is what it is. You feel me? So one of the guys who didn't like the hoes, who basically was picking with the hoes, arguing with them the whole time, he seen me to walk up, G. He get right in here. He get right in the mix. Oh, yeah. Man, blow them hoes down. Before he passed me to the deucey. Man, out here with the deucey. Now, mind you, the hoes already fake feeling the vibe. They see what's going on. They walking off, going to the bus stop on the train to catch the bus back to see, to they shit. On the other I mean, they on the bus on the one to catch the bus back to they shit. You feel me? So now, we like. Bro, they finna go, they finna go, they finna go. Mina over there, like, low-key, bro. The hoes don't even know. They got their backs turned on the bus stop, and they don't even know. It's motherfuckers half a block away stopping Mina from blowing their ass down, folks. Like, literally stopping them, like, bro, hold on. No, we ain't on that, we ain't on that, we ain't on that. Like, for real. A deucey. Gave her deucey, folks. Gave her a little pack of packer She was from the top of the hoes down. For mother really, had, no, Mina, no, we ain't on that, folks. Let them hoes leave, let them hoes leave, let them hoes leave. Let them hoes leave. Type shit. She really ready to catch a motherfucker. Hmm, bro, she ready. I ain't gonna even lie. She was ready to smoke one of them hoes. I'm damn. Shit didn't got real, folk. Like, it didn't got over real. You know what I'm saying? Like, she ready to smoke these hoes. Even to catch a body before me. Um, am bet they far come. I could. Hey, tell me I'm Mina 600 at them rook. Oh, wow, I'm still great. <laughs> Mina was like that, folks. She was a little slow. Little motherfucker, folks. So now. Bang. Now, so, um, another reason why I always, you know, like, why I talk to, hey, happy birthday, MDJ, and I appreciate you for the donation game. Uh, one of the reasons why I always, like, give Mina the highest honor, bro, is because, like, she was literally, like, she was, like, she was, like, my mama, my brother and my sister, bro. Like, Mina was, like, a person that, like, I really don't think I could have survived or lived life without her. Like, I just, like, I got the most, the highest honor for my twin, bro. You feel me? Because, like, my mama, my daddy went to the feds when we was, like, right before all this street shit started happening. My daddy had ended up getting 10 years in the feds. So, we didn't have my father. The whole time we was going through all this shit, my daddy in the feds. And... My mama, because my daddy is in the feds, my mama at this point, I guess what she figured is like, my mama never wanted us to feel that my daddy was in the feds. Like, she never wanted us to be like, go to live in a certain, like, a lesser life. Not saying that we had mansions and like shit like that, but like, how we was living when my daddy was out, she wanted us to continue living like that when the whole time he was in jail. And because of that, my mama was never at the crib, bro. Like, she worked, 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 worked. Like, when niggas be talking about they mamas working forever and ever and never seeing them, bro, I know about that personally. Like, I never seen my mother, bro. I never seen her. 
You feel me? Like, and that's just like so many memories I got on my block in my crib on Indiana in that courtway. My mama was not there, bro. She was just simply not there. She couldn't afford to. She was doing any shift, every shift, multiple jobs, all type of stuff, bro. Like to, to keep us in nice shit, in like nice cribs where we can have our own rooms and not have to share space with each other because we was getting older. Couldn't share rooms no more. Like we had too much going on. We like, like, so we we like she really like became my mother, bro. Like I didn't know how to cook back in the day. Like she was in charge of that. She was she used to make the hamburger helper and get the chicken from Wala. Like, bro, we used to literally go to Wala because we from the hood. Wala know our mamas, our grandma. You know what I'm saying? Like, so sometime we was too fucked up. We could go to Wala and ask him for a 10 piece wing and he like like cause he ain't sell fried food, but he sold like chicken wings. Like, so we'll go in there and we'll be able to get noodles on the house or get wings on the house until my mama could pay it later on in the week because we gotta feed ourselves, bro. You know what I'm saying? And Mina used to be the one cooking our food. Mina used to be the one we had chores. She was the one making sure we did the chores that we was doing. She like everything that that we how we was structured growing up, bro. Like Mina, Mina made sure that we all was good. For the people that's finna come ask me when I'm smoking a black again, that's new. To the laugh, bro, I didn't have any thoint, and I don't have anything to smoke on because I couldn't get it. So here we are. We, 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 I'm smoking this black, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I got, and I got a little, little lick lick that I'm about to drink because we on Club Shay Shay right now. Yeah, I freaked it, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. I know how to freak it. My mom been smoking these. My mom and daddy been smoking black since before I was born. So now, yeah, Club Shay Shay vibes. You feel me? We up in here. We doing it. Today, we gonna change it up. Everybody that usually grab they wood or they paper or whatever, grab y'all fifth. Grab y'all fifth or y'all pint or whatever y'all drinking. And we, we, yeah. We, we chilling right now. You feel me? We, 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 we turned. I know it's. I know it's only 1.30, but, you know, you know. Now, I ain't finna be on here smoking no roach, bro. I got roaches I can hit, but y'all y'all be y'all be, y'all be cracking too many jokes on me, bro. I ain't gonna even lie. My fans, we like family. You feel me? So we talk shit to each other. They gonna, boy, that little ass blunt, your little ass smoking a motherfucking. They gonna get, they gonna, my fans gonna get on my ass, bro. We like cousins, bro. We, we just, we just. We ain't just, this ain't just business with me and my people, bro. We like cousins. We 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 like cousins who bo who barbecue each other at the family. Dude, mom, get your big feet out. I'm like, my fans, they don't play that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I get on this bitch smoking a roast, they go have my dumb ass on the, on the, man, treating me. You feel me? So now, uh... Yeah. So that, folks, we fast forward to the story now. So now, here comes the part where, well, matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me elaborate a little more. She was like my father, she was like my, my dad, my mom, my sister, and my brother, bro. So it's like, I needed her for so many things in the streets because she always had, like a lot of the days that I ate, I only ate because of my sister. I ain't gonna even lie, like, even on the days where, she could, like, we, we didn't have food in the refrigerator, hamburger help, or chicken wings to fry, or cereal, like, and I'd be in the hood hungry as hell, broke, lint in my pocket, stinking, you feel me, no coat. I, and I don't know why I used to be scared to ask my sister for shit back then, folk, but it's like she never told me no. I used to be, and it take me about an hour or two to be like, I'm just gonna go ask my sister, bro, I'm hungry as hell, I need a pizza pub. Go right upstairs. She a bless me. She, you know, like I said, she always did her. I always had her a little money. So when she go, when I when I catch sis, she gonna she gonna give me right. <laughs> I go upstairs, I ask sis like, hey, look, sis, I ain't gonna even lie. I need a piece of puff, and I need a fry, and I need to put a little, I need to put some nacho cheese on my fry, bro. Can I get five? This won't be one fifty for the pizza puff. Another fry gonna be a dollar. I'm gonna have to put the cheese on there. They gonna make that fifty cent. But if you just give me a fry, I get some drink too. 
on Biddy, I get some drink. Fries with cheese on it and a piece of puff on BD for, for the fire. So she give me the fire. I'm gone. I'm going right to the store. That's a whole meal on Fulton Gray. So I go upstairs, ask Big Bro. She coming right to that. She a boy. Huh. Well, she, <laughs> she acting like my grandma and shit. Like, you know your little stinking ass, little asking me for shit. But, huh. You feel me? And she always gave little bro what I needed, man, to survive out here, bro. I ain't gonna go out because, you know, running from the police and snatching iPhones and shit like that, you get tired, bro. You be running a lot. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? It's a lot going on. So you gonna need, you gonna, you be hungry, bro. And I ain't gonna lie, I fuck around, came to a two times a day for, for a five. Because I ain't gonna lie, that pizza puff, that, that, them fries and that, that drink, Nacho cheese on the fry, that shit used to hit, but if I buy one of them bitches at 1 o'clock, I'm going to need another one again at about 6, 7 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to need another one, bro. Ain't, ain't even go. You really should have just gave me 10 when you when you, when you, when you gave me the 5, really, because I'm going to be hungry later, bro. Unless you better make us some food later, just please just give me $10, bro, so I can eat both, both, eat, 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 eat both times a day, bro, at least twice a day. You feel me, folks? Because I'm... Man, folks, like, you feel me? It was, it was crazy. But she always looked out for little bro, though. I ain't gonna lie. She always looked out for little bro, folks. So now, uh, because we were so close in the hood and because she was how she was, bro, one of my friends that she ended up connecting with the most, well, she connected with all my friends that I kept close. She always kept, she always was close with them, too, because she knew who was really, who was really for me. So, so, one of my friends that she ended up getting super close with was L.A. And not to get too deep in the story, because I've spoken on it many times, but when he got killed, when Mama L.A. asked her to do his hair, I thought that was a big ask. I ain't even going to lie, because when L.A. got killed, I was 16, which mean, that mean it was 17. So, that mean when his funeral came... I mean, it was 17, and, like, she had never been through nothing like that before. Like, imagine you being with somebody every day, treating them like family, and you used to them being, like, alive and well and all that type of stuff for until, and, and, and then one day, you dead. So, you, 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 she already got to deal with the fact that her little brother is gone, but now Mama L. Layton bestowed up on her, like, a big responsibility, bro, and... How, what she explained to me is she said this is the last thing that she could ever do for L.A. And she going to do it for him. Because she used to do stuff for L.A. when he was alive, bro, like that. She would she'd do that when he was alive. She would do as hell if she if he wanted her to or braided or whatever. Like, she would give him money like she would give me money. You know what I'm saying? So it's like how she felt was if anything... This is the last gift or thing that I could do for him and I'm going to do it. You feel me? Because this is my homie. And I had to really respect that, bro. And it's so crazy because back then, so many videos, like, I remember at L.A. Funeral, bro, they realized, chased M thing's sister Kristen down for her phone and snatched it, folks. She went to the casket and took a picture of L.A. Because around this time, this was around the time when JoJo picture was floating around in the casket, all the ops was disrespecting them. This is the time where I, there's another couple famous ops that was like, <clears throat> Casket pictures, because that used to be a thing back in the day. Casket pictures, go up to the casket when you viewing them and be like, <laughs> feel me? Like, that was that was popular back then, you know what I'm saying? So, like, Mina had a whole video, bro, of her doing L.A. Hell when he was dead, bro. Like, she, it's a whole video somebody else recorded that was sitting there with her, maybe one of the funeral people, that recorded her doing folks' hell. They had folks laying back and like, a big, like, one of them hospital beds for where you could lean them on type of ways. They had him laying back, and they had, I think if I'm remembering correctly, they had a sheet over his face with his hair out. They had, like, a sheet over him with his hair out, though, for she could twist it. But I could be wrong, but I think that's how, how I remember seeing it in the video. So she in there, like, bro, she doing this hell. She ain't like, <laughs> ooh. Like, she sitting there really, like, doing her brother hell, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, she doing this hell. And this is like, when I seen it, bro, it's like, when you love somebody, because stuff like that used to always get out. Like, 
Them videos used to just end up in the wrong hands all the time, bro. So people just used to always end up able to dish your dead homie because they got a video of them laying somewhere in the casket dead. You feel they putting words over it. All that type of stuff, bro. Like that's them type of videos used to get out. So when 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 she was doing what she was doing, bro, the videos that got made that she had on her phone, they never got posted. They never went nowhere. There's people that still never seen this video I'm speaking of right now. You feel me? Like, and she did folks' hair to the T. He was fresh as hell, dreads, nice as hell at his funeral, folks. Like, Mina did that. Mina did that, bro. Can't nobody say that they did that. Mina did that, bro. You would never understand the type of pain that goes through some traumatic, stressful shit like that, bro. Like, <clears throat> but she did that. <sighs> so, like, now I want to go back a little bit. To before L.A. died, when she met Vaughn. When she met Vaughn, it was the same, the same way I, I ended up coming in the crib one day with this nigga, and it was just went from there. I ain't gonna even lie. She, he thirsty, just in love with my sister, bro. So now, it gets to a situation where it's like, this my nigga. You know what I'm saying? But he he my, he, he, he like my brother, but he also like, he, he he's fucking with my sister now. They going together. They like Bonnie and Clyde. You know, they going on prom together. You know, just to briefly speak on Vaughn and her because I've already spoken on it before. Like, but when Vaughn came into her life, oh, it was a different, it was different, folks. Vaughn was heavily in love with my sister, fo, and he was not going for none of that. He was to tell her he going to kill niggas. He catch her with all type of shit, bro. I ain't going to lie. Like, he used to tell her that. I ain't going to bet. So it's like, it's like, man, fo, like, when Vaughn folk, you know, it's so many misconstructions and judgmental opinions about like Vaughn and the situation with her and Yari Mail and all that. And I just want to let y'all know, bro, like, Mina went to jail for Vaughn. Mina did 18 months on the band for Vaughn. Mina did six months after that in prison for Vaughn. And the lady that sentenced her, bro, she told her. I don't want to sentence you. I know these not your guns. I know them two little boys they end up catching later. I know these, they had them. But at the end of the day, when the police pulled your car over, they was in the back of your car. I don't want to sentence you, but I legally, by law, got to. I don't want to give you this time, but I can't give it to nobody else. She gave her uh, four years. Gave her four years. She went. She already had over a year and a half on the band. So they ended up <clears throat> cutting that time, and she did six months in the joint, and then... She came home. But the whole time she did that time, bro, we never got a dime. Mina Bond was 9000 Nobody from Von Cap helped that. It is when he was tied in with OTF. No, Vernie was on that case, too. Nobody did nothing. You feel me? Like, nobody helped us pay for her attorney. Nobody came and slid on her and gave her nothing the whole time she was out on the band fighting the case. Like, nobody gave us nothing for her. You know what I'm saying? So when a lot of people talk about loyalty and what she did with Melly and all of this and that, man, save it, bro. Because y'all don't know. You feel me? Like, back then, 9,000 sound like nothing now. But back then, that shit sound like 100,000, bro. Like, you niggas ain't just had that laying around or nothing like that, bro. Niggas had to let her sit in jail for months, folks. So the, and let the, let, the, let the court reduce her bond. So we can get out. <clears throat> so she can get out. They reduced her bond, and we ended up coming to get her for the bond that got reduced. You know what I'm saying? So, if they wouldn't have never reduced her bond, she'd have been sending her a sin. They did 10% of the bond, folk, but 10% of... Her shit was 90000 which was 10%. Her shit was 90000 10% of 90000 was 9000 They gave her a $9,000 D-bond. Nobody helped us. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody helped us, bro. So... Like, when y'all speak on a lot of stuff, just make sure y'all know the wrong, the both sides of every, it's two sides to every coin. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, when I, when, when we, when I went to jail, she was finna get out. You feel me for the situation with her and Vaughn. When I went to jail, um, you know, yes, they said the dirt give his watch to Vaughn. Where to where the prom? He actually had to watch before that, but yeah, he had it on prom. He definitely had that Brightland. It was a, uh, I think it was a silver, uh, platinum Brightland or some shit. It was plain, or if I remember, it wasn't plain. Probably had something in the face, but yeah, it was dirt. He had, he had, um, he had his, he had his watch. Um, so 
Now, you know, it comes to a point where Mina finna get out. I'm going in jail. I end up going to jail in March. I think she came home in April or something. I think she came home in April or May. You feel me? So now she comes home and I'm in jail. So now when I'm, I, I, I think, was I in the county or a prison? I don't know, but I was in one of them places, folks. Like, and I remember, like, because people got this real construed. They think that I just was somebody who co-signed this or was with this or her dating Melly. Bro, my, how I am and what I was doing in the streets to Young Money, like, we was real ops. Them niggas killed my best friend, bro. Like, how could y'all ever really feel like I was ever going to really be with, with anything involving any Young Money niggas? Like, y'all got me fucked up. Like, people sit around and make jokes about that shit and all that. That shit was never that. You feel me? It was never that. Um, But when I called home one day, I think I was in prison. <clears throat> and I called home and said, and I'm like, hey, I'm talking to him and I'm talking to everybody and everything. So when I'm talking to him, it's like, they telling me like, yeah, I got something to tell you. I got something to tell you. So now when she tell me, I'm like, what? I couldn't believe that shit because how I felt was, Bro, you know what's up. Like, this, you not my sister that's in the blind. You know what's up. You feel me? Like, you know how we locked in. This shit, this too much blood been shared for a napkin. But that was me. That's an initial reaction and emotion to what I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? I hang up the phone. I hang up the phone. I hang up the phone. So now when I hang up the phone, I hang up the phone and shit, and I'm on uh, I end up getting mad. I said I went. I was on the phone in the day room and said I end up going to my cell because I was blue. I couldn't even. I, bro, I couldn't. I couldn't stomach this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I always think it was some evil intention in there. I thought Mina was being a goofy and and Melly was trying to get close to me to whack me. So I'm no. I'm telling Mina like, bro, no, nah, that ain't that ain't that ain't that ain't what that ain't real, folks. You know what I'm saying? No, she ain't say I was in New York. I was I was in jail, nigga. Fuck you, talking about? I was in jail. Feel me? So, now, I hang up the phone. I don't even want to talk. So, now, I end up getting over, you know, I end up, like, getting over everything. Like, you feel me? And thinking about it in my cell phone because my initial reaction, I thought my sister wasn't protecting me. Like, I, I, I thought she wasn't protecting me. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't rock with that. I thought she was being very, like, I thought she was being selfish. I thought she was only worried about herself. She wasn't worried about me. Or blowing our spot or worried about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Worried about the other members that might come and see me when I come home and can't cause this nigga know I low. I thought she wasn't thinking about me, bro. But in all reality, she was always thinking about me. And she knew like even though like she didn't start fucking with Melly because of me, she knew once she had Melly, he'd never do nothing or never put me in harm's way. And that gave her peace. Because really, for we had fucked up all the rest of our ops. When I came home and right before I went to jail, Young Money was really like our only real smoke. You know, we had real beef with J Gyro and TYMB and all that prior to like, prior to us like really, um, prior to us like really, um, I mean like really first getting in the streets, folks. But around this time, me coming home, like it's really Young Money or nothing. It's Young Money, Young Money, Young Money, Young Money. It's all everybody thinking about. Shout out to Mabase. Um, like, no, you you reading that wrong. Her not getting bought, blonded out never made her fraternize with the ops. Mina is a is from Welterer, bro. Mina not from my hood. She played my hood and she from she she was through my hood because she know everybody. She been living over there. We been living over there our whole life. She didn't fraternize with the ops. They not her ops. You feel me? Like, me and a woman at the end of the day. And you got to remember, a lot of the stories I just mentioned, this is when we was shorties kids. The shit with Melly, she's a grown-up now. You know what I'm saying? This shit with Melly, when I go to jail, 2016, came home. Like, I'm talking about shit at first from 2011, 10, 12. This shit five years later type shit. You feel me? Like, so, me and another fraternized, her not getting bonded out didn't make her go fraternized with the ops. She never, she didn't fuck with folks them after that shit. You feel me? That shit was bogus. But she liked who she liked, and she and you can't change that, bro. But I, I, I could say this: the shit that they did didn't help the situation. Like maybe if they was real to her when Yamil tried to talk to her, she fuck around when he ain't said nothing to him. 
but she probably liked them or something back, but she wouldn't have never gave him the time of day because what it was, but that, that was an eye opener for my sister, bro. You can't be loyal to people who not loyal to you. What the fuck is she supposed to be loyal to? These people just left her in jail and said, fuck her. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, that JoJo story is a classic. This storytelling is your gift from God, bro. Damn, big ace from the side. Oh, you from the rack. I appreciate that. All the rack love, I love it, bro. And I know this live been long. I know y'all probably mad at me. You feel I'm sorry, y'all. But it, it could be longer. You know what I'm saying? But I, I dumped it down a little bit so me and me... Because I, if I sat on here and talked about her, I'd be talking on her for eight hours. But I'm going to get to the end of the story very soon. You know, so Mina, like, she she didn't, she didn't like, that loyalty shit, it's, it's a two-way street, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to show nobody more loyalty than they showing you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not supposed to show people more, because once you do that, people know they got you. And they know they can finesse you and get you in any type of way and all that. You feel me? So, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? No way. But, anywho, uh... When that situation happened, folks, and I had to come home. When I came home, I had to run into your meal. Like, this shit wasn't just for play. They actually fucked with each other. I had to run into him. That nigga came to my crib. Like, and this is shit that I had to understand, bro. And it's like, when you know a situation, folks, what made it, what made it, like, and he wasn't around me a lot, but it's just like, what made it, like, what made me start looking at the situation in a different light was the day that I got my low dropped on me. When I got my low dropped on me and Slim from No Limit DM me and said, Hey, was you in the store? Was you in the barber shop yesterday? And I said, Yeah, why you say that? And he he man called my phone right now. I called his phone and that man told me just like this. Look, man. The barber shop you was at, young money got so low, they was on their way. The call got made to me, your man was in the car with me. I mean, he said the car got made to Yarmil. I was in the car with him. Me and Yarmil, we dead at that. And I believe him, bro, because what other reason is that stopping that from killing me, bro? When a nigga protect you or he show you some type of loyalty, folk, like, like, oh, bro, oh, oh, hell no, nah, folk. I ain't gonna lie. That shit was dead, folk. I never bought no nigga no drinks in the club, boy. I never, I seen Yarmil in the club. One time. And you know what I seen him in the club with? No limit niggas. That nigga one with he was by himself and it was slim and it was two more niggas from no limit. I don't buy niggas bottles, boy niggas I don't what what man, bro, y'all y'all man, look, bro. Y'all be sound slow as hell. I ain't even gonna care. I don't do none of that. You feel me? I don't even shit be feel me. But like I don't, I don't play them type of games, bro. Like, even if a nigga acting like he fucking me, it's still like, I fuck, that was cool, that was real shit. And because you did that for me, like, I I won't never drop your low or do, have none, have nothing done to you. You know what I'm saying? But as we finna be in the club toasting it up, buying each other drinks, hell no. You know how many people from the rack in the club would have had that on video? Like, damn, look at two killers from, from the ops. Buying each other drinks in a session. Come on, folks. And we was at we was at a real club. We was at the Skybox, boy, when I seen him. We weren't at no little ass club that nobody went to. We was at a club that everybody went to that stayed open at five in the morning. I ain't gonna lie. You think if a motherfucker would have seen man, come on, folks, stop it. Had, that shit would have went viral on say cheese, all type of shit, even back then. What the fuck is you talking about, boy? Ain't none of that. None of that. Feel me? Like, that nigga stopped me from getting killed. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We fraternized. Hell yeah. We, he, nigga, he showed love and loyalty to my sister, nigga. That niggas that's from our way didn't show her. You feel me? Like, so, people be expecting me to talk about y'all male a certain type of way, bro. And I can't. You feel me? He a killer. He done did shit to my niggas and all type of shit. And it's vice versa. But at the end of the day, nigga, when you show me something... When you show me something, that's 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 how I gotta move, nigga. I'm phone them, nigga. You could, nigga. How I'ma move shifty with a nigga who saved my life, who know I stayed, know my family, my mama, daddy, sisters, cousins, all that, my bitch, everything. How I'ma how I'ma slam him out when he purposely making niggas not slam me out? What y'all wanted me to do? 
Y'all wanted me to be disloyal to a nigga who's saving my life. Even at that moment, he's saving my life. Because all it take was for him to show the wrong nigga where I stay or put the wrong bug in one nigga head, give the wrong nigga from his block intel. And, and they can do it they self. They don't need Melly. That nigga kept my business and what I what we had going on to itself. To itself. Knowing the, the shots that me and him then took be prior to him fucking with my sister. Knowing the beef that his hood and mine's got. Knowing that the blood our hoods to shed once amongst each other. And that shit didn't matter to him, bro. So what I'ma do? What I'ma do? You want me to backdoor a nigga that, that ain't that that's that that saved my life? Hell no. He ain't have to do that. Cause that was the first loyalty he showed me. He called for he ain't have to get in that business. He probably got into it with 10 niggas from his hood, stopping that from happening. Y'all don't know what happened, fuck. And I was in the barbershop with my pipe on me, but who the fuck gonna, man, I'm sitting in the first chair. As soon as you walk in, they could have smoked me through the window. I would have never been able to up my gun. You know what I'm saying? So when people talk about all this and that with Melly and all that, all the niggas who was talking about him, they was hanging with him. I watched Melly go to niggas' hoods and hang with niggas who be acting like they got a problem with him, man. He was on your block. He was on y'all block before he got killed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like niggas be crazy as hell. I don't know why. But Melly was a... He showed me loyalty that niggas from my hood ain't show me. Niggas from, ain't, from my hood ain't show my sister. So with that being said, you can feel how you want. You, you can feel how you want about a certain situation, but I, I just I just could never do nothing to nobody or have nothing done to nobody that intentionally saving my life or saving my people's lives. You know what I'm saying? Now, because of you, you did that for me. Nobody that you really love will never be touched either. You ain't never got to worry about a motherfucker doing nothing. Like, nigga, I ain't going to lie. I done seen his brother woo out here. Low key, he don't even know. I know he this him, fo. I'm watching, man. Niggas asking, man, no, nah, fo. Hell no, nah, that shit dead. I ain't gonna lie. It's dead, fo. You gotta catch another nigga from over there. I ain't gonna lie. And that ain't me saying nothing crazy, but you just gotta you gotta do something to somebody else, bro. I can't let you do nothing to no nigga who saved me and my people's lives before. And made sure we was straight. I can't let that ride. I can't. So it's like now you get into a situation where it's like I'm speaking on that because bro, it's so many people that's judgmental about my sister and this story, bro, because they don't know the real. And like me, I'm I get emotional when I'm talking about my sister, bro, because my sister, she's a real one. She she took her time and it was thorough when she didn't have to be, bro. Like she didn't have to be thorough about a lot of situations, gang. Um, bro, she didn't have to be thorough about a lot of things that was going on around us, bro, but she was. Like, she was a real person. It was a lot bestowed on her shoulders, folk, at a young age. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, with a lot of stuff, folk, I'm not going to let y'all paint her in no picture as somebody she not, bro, because she's actually a real thoroughbred person that you're never going to see again in this life. You never gonna see no person as real as my sister, bro. I ain't gonna lie, not no females. I ain't gonna bet. So it's like with with a lot of things get said, I'm not gonna let that, I'm not gonna let that that stay like how that is. I just can't. I can't, I can't, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I just can't. I can't allow people to tarnish her name or make her look like she was some block hopping op loving motherfucker folk when she was really thorough and she was thorough to everybody who came her way. You feel me? Everybody. Um, like, so it's like at the end of the day, bro, people need to sh give her her flowers, man. Happy birthday to my sister, folk. I love you dearly, twin. I hope, I wish I could have done this story time with her, but I haven't made it around my sister yet. You know what I'm saying? I haven't made it around, and I didn't want to go to... I'm going to let the day get too late without doing what I'm doing right now. So, happy birthday to Mina Red, Twin Ski, Skino. I love you, bro. Um, I really hope that you have a good birthday. And we've been together for 27 years now almost. And 
I hope we got an eternity together, bro. I hope we do. Like, you know, like, even when I had this stuff going on with my own block, like, my sisters was just like, there. she gonna fight, go to bat for you, like, like nobody else. Like, you would never find nobody to, to, that'll, that'll, that'll go in for you how, how Mina will. You feel me? And I just want all my fans and the people who come to my channel and rock with me to understand that I don't really care about the outsiders or the people who talk and don't really rock with us. But what I care about is the ones like that rock with me. You feel me? And that care about me and think highly of me. I want you to think the same of my sister, bro. Because she a real one. You know what I'm saying? Like, she a real one, gang. You know what I'm saying? And that's how she deserved to be remembered. Um... Oh, um, happy birthday! What's to get, bro? What's so crazy is look. I'm gonna ask y'all this too, man. Do y'all like when I do unscheduled lives? I'm gonna tell y'all this though. Right now, I always try to do my lives between noon and three o'clock. Whenever I'm gonna do them. So every day when you wake up, try to just look for a noon and three o'clock. Now someday I might get carried away. I'm gonna do it at five seven just to give y'all the video that I wanted to give y'all that day. But I always try to do my lives at like twelve to. Like noon to like three o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I should start doing scheduled times. But I don't really be doing like, bro, it'd be hard to do scheduled stuff because my days aren't scheduled. Like every day I wake up with something different to do or something something else to face or over or like just handle. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a busy guy. So with that being said, everything like every day. I'm not going to be able to just be like, oh, I can go at 2 o'clock. It's like 2 o'clock of that day. I might have something to do. I might have something going on. So, like, I'll be trying to do it when I'm not doing it or nothing like that. But I'm going to try to start planning or moving things around that I do have to do to after, after before 12 noon or after 3 o'clock because that's the type of window that I want to um uh, do it in. You know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people be at work and all that type of stuff too. But y'all gotta remember, I got fans around the world, and when I do stuff later in the day, a lot of my fans from Europe and Asia and all that type of stuff, they can't, like, they can't um, they can't watch it live. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm over here doing it at five o'clock, Chicago or. United States time and they over there in another country sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like I try to do it at a time where like my peoples from overseas can catch me too. You feel me? And my peoples from like oh uh, other countries can tap in for cause I know like when the sun rise here, it's setting over there. Or about to set. You feel me? So I'm just trying to do, you know, at a reasonable time where my people from everywhere could like lock, lock in. And, and tap in, you know what I'm saying? So that's really what I be trying to do. I, I do be seeing a lot of people say stuff about um, me like doing it at a certain time of day, but I always try to do it at a certain like earliest as I can because I be wanting people like from all over the world to be able to tune in. So um, yeah, twelve to three, that's kind of like our grace period. So just be always looking for that type of time and around that time. Um, Love all my fans. I appreciate y'all coming soon, man. Happy birthday to Mina Red, real legend. Um, my twin. I love everybody for showing up. I love all my mods for always popping out. I love the people who donated and contributed to my channel so far. I love all y'all, man. For them, thanks for coming through. I'll see y'all tomorrow.